Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. I appreciate you're very busy. Um, I was hoping to talk to you a little bit about NIMA vehicles and their, their current use and some of the contracts that I know you've had in the past. So uh, I understand that the Ajban vehicles have been used quite extensively by the UAE Armed Forces. Has that use resulted in any developments in the vehicles going forward? Well, uh, yeah, actually, it's a good question. I mean, uh, for sure, the Ajban 440 is definitely one of the main staple vehicles we have at, uh, at Nimmer Automotive today. Uh, I believe we've had over a thousand of those vehicles, uh, or more even, shipped out, uh, not just to the UAE, but also within other uh, countries around the world. Um, I think what we actually did uh, when uh, EDIC came in and, uh, and took over Nimmer, one of the main aspects was for us to really revisit uh, the vehicle, take a look at uh, what we could do. Uh, and we had gotten a lot of feedback from our end users because of the ongoing operations that they were in at the time, uh, as well as the ongoing operations they're in today. Uh, and we managed to pull in a lot of the feedback in terms of the maintainability, uh, in terms of uh, crew comfort, in terms of the ergonomics of aspects, uh, in terms of also some uh, uh, you know, technology and, uh, and things that they needed. Uh, which due to the requirement of uh, new, let's say, radios and equipment that they're using today, uh, where we had to internally really revisit the capabilities of the vehicle. One of the main things uh, which I also mentioned yesterday was regarding the uh, EMC compatibility. So that was one major aspect that we actually hit uh, last year uh, on top of a several different, you know, we had I believe a list of about 33 uh, you know, pain points uh, from our end users that they wanted, you know, if they could in the next production uh, run to actually go through and change. So this was something we really focused on last year. And we've managed to go through each and every single one of those points, uh, providing an engineering solution to them, providing, you know, some prototypes, uh, going through different aspects there with the end user and making sure he's satisfied what he's getting. So uh, really taking that feedback was valuable for us, you know, and uh, has allowed us to put together now a new, more refined vehicle with greater capability, with more capacity, uh, you know, to the end user's needs and requirements, especially in the UAE. Uh, you know, we're looking at uh, the basics even from levels of protection, uh, from, uh, you know, improved maneuverability, uh, looking at, uh, you know, in internal creature comforts at the end of the day and more space as well. So uh, these are all things that we've actually been looking at. I mean, even little things from door stoppers to door handles to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, little items, uh, you know, that may be used to sort of get in the way when they had to do certain maintenance operations. So it was all really about taking a look at the ease of use, uh, the ease of maintenance, the ease of access. Uh, and you'll see a lot of these uh, in our vehicles during IDEX 2000, uh, you know, IDEX this year in February in Abu Dhabi. Uh, so we'll be releasing, we've got uh, three different variants of the Ajban 440 that we'll be showing over there. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep it to a surprise uh, when you guys hopefully come and interview me over there and we'll be able to go through that. But uh, we've got, you know, three different variants uh, of the Ajban 440 there. The other vehicle that we've also been really focusing on is the Hafid 6x6. This is also one of the main staple vehicles that are used uh, throughout the UAE. Uh, and this was also something, I mean, it shares a lot of the features of the Ajban 440 on the interior. So we've also pulled those aspects in. Uh, you know, we're looking at also different capabilities on that to increase the capacity of the payload, uh, increase some of the performance in terms of the braking capabilities and, uh, and other issues that, you know, we received as feedback from the end user to, to work on. So you're moving ahead quite quite effectively with the Ashban and the Hafit family. I'd also like to ask you, uh, if that's okay, about the, the Jace or the N35, I think it returned to being last year. I think Miles informed me of that. I received news that last year there was an order for 1,500 Jace or N35 vehicles in 4x4 and 6x6 configurations. Is this a contract that you're able to talk to us about? Well, I mean, I can tell you it, it did not progress. We didn't move forward with that uh, for several different reasons. Um, you know, the vehicle, uh, the Jace 4x4 is a heavy AMRAP vehicle. It's a level 4 capable vehicle uh, and something that they do actually have in their arsenal today and they are using. Uh, you know, we do receive these vehicles back for service and taking a look at them and uh, making sure to get them up and, and back to battle as soon as possible. But 
uh, our focus really now, you know, there's been the development over, over that vehicle for the last few years, uh, and our focus uh, now is really to focus on the 6x6 um, and uh, push that through a more maturity growth program. Uh, and this is something to really focus again on the feedback we received and uh, making sure, uh, you know, we attain the requirements of the end user. And that is one of the main focuses now on that. Again, focusing not only on the, the power, the mobility, uh, you know, of the vehicle, which it definitely has, but also one of the main aspects of maintainability, so that it becomes something a lot easier to maintain out on the field, uh, something more accessible in terms of the power pack aspects out on the field. Uh, you know, this was one of the, the points that they were raising uh, that they'd come back to us. So these are things we're focusing on now, uh, but we believe it still be a year or two uh, until we get that vehicle up to uh, a level that we feel is really out ready for the market as a mature vehicle. Well, that's exciting. I look forward to seeing the end result of that. Uh, another vehicle, so I was very lucky to be driven around the desert in the LR SOV, um, which I... I it's a really interesting vehicle. We went around your test track as well, uh, which I think is quite a unique f uh, feature of the NIMA facility. What, what are the future plans for the LR SOV? Because it follows on from the special operations vehicle based on the Ashban 440, uh, which I, I think that's right, isn't it? Um, so how is the program for that vehicle going? Have you, have you had much success with it going forwards? Well, uh, we actually uh, had that in the UAE summer trials uh, this year, well, 2018 and it handled wonderfully. Uh, I think the feedback that we got from uh, people that were out on the track, I mean, if you talk to some of the people, you know, at the end of the day, uh, what we heard was, we all wish we had an MR vehicle. <laughs> so it was a great opportunity, really, for us to showcase that vehicle, show the capabilities. But in, I think in today's uh, environment, uh, what they were really seeking out more was a more uh, uh, level of protection. You know, this is where our program today is pushing the Ajban from a level two uh, blast, level two uh, ballistic protection to a level three blast and level three protection capability, both 3A and 3B. So these are one of the things that we had been focusing on again on the Ajban. And this is where the sort of not so much focus on the LRSOV because they wanted something really with more protection in, in the operations they're in today. But definitely we're looking at that LRSOV, we'll have it as well uh, showcased uh, during IDEX and I think it'll be something that we can hopefully move forward with in the future. Maybe it'll need to be lightened up a little bit because, you know, for what it is, uh, you know, it, we can definitely take off a lot of weight of that vehicle. But the modularity aspect of it was the main focus of that, to be able to have the same engine, same transmission, the same chassis on that at the end of the day and, and just have the capabilities and the modularity on that. Great. So I have one more question if you have time. So uh, you've mentioned a few times about increasing the protection on your vehicles and I understand that there are a lot of different companies who have invested a lot of time in, in advanced protections. Is that an element of the NIMA business that you have looked to cooperate with other companies or have you developed those capabilities internally? Well, the, the, the body of the vehicle is, is something that we've developed in-house, so it is our own IP, it is something that exists, so we really have to sort of go back and take a look at the, everything, you know, so uh, we actually do most of that in-house, we do everything in-house. I mean, the only thing that we were always outsourcing was the actual blast certification capabilities, you know, everything else we have the capability to do today, uh, you know, in terms of the simulation aspect, all of these things were growing. Uh, and this is something, you know, along with the EMC chamber that we've set up last year, part of the growth of NIMR to have that capability, not only for us to do our own testing and be able to do our own R&D, but also to support the armed forces and being able to test uh, other platforms, uh, you know, and, and do sort of testing locally instead of uh, relying on that to be done outside the country. That's great. Thank you so much for your time. I look forward to seeing the developments in, in NIMR vehicles at IDEX. Thank you. Thank you.